Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to Breakfast with Sergio. In today's episode, which is a beautiful day, we're going to visit Jeffrey Berslow studio here in Chicago, and you come along with me. Well, hello, Jeffrey. Hello. Thank you so much for having us here today in your amazing, beautiful studio. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, well, you uh, I've been or? a full-time sculptor for the last 12 years. It's the okay. second career for me. Uh, the R word is not in my vocabulary. I just changed. The first 41 years, I was a toy designer. Mm -hmm. Designed toys and games and dolls for Mattel and Hasbro and Fisher-Price and all the major oh, wow. companies were clients. So but how I, you come from a toy maker uh, kind of career? Into well, I, I knew when I left the toy business that I was yeah. going to sculpt full-time. I mean, it wasn't right. like, what am I going to do now, play golf three <laughs> yeah, days a week? Exactly. No, you know. <laughs> So uh, when I'm in Chicago, uh, I'm here seven days a week. <coughs> I mean, I, uh, if I'm not here, <coughs> I'm traveling somewhere. Right. And in the climate today, it's a little bit difficult to travel. Exactly. So I'm here all the time. Very cool. And uh, I'm an early morning person. I'm usually here 5, 5.30 in the morning. Yeah. And I don't work all day. I quit around 2 or 3 and, uh, and then go back to the gallery and stuff. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, let's go right in. Come on in. So, Jeffrey, tell us a little bit about, you know, you have here some samples of the work that you have done over the years. When I, when I started sculpting uh -huh. uh, 12 years ago, full-time, uh, I was doing figurative work. Which is kind of uh, like something this, like... This is one of my pieces. There's another one here. So, this is also my piece. This is my piece. A lot of other stuff is work I collect okay. from other artists. Mm -hmm. But I did this for about four years. Uh, and it's work done in clay molds, waxes, and mm -hmm. ultimately bronze, okay? I work with a woman by the name of Susan Clenard. This is her work, okay? okay? And she was, she was a brilliant teacher and a brilliant sculptress, okay? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people work, or sometimes people teach. Uh, yeah. To find somebody that does both very well is unusual. <laughs> right. But I studied with her four years, and I learned a lot from her. Mm -hmm. The one thing I found with this type of figurative sculpture, it was yeah. all about execution. Right. It's you get a, a model, a photograph, and it's pushing the clay around. Yeah. And there's no surprises. Nothing changes. Susan ended up moving away. Her husband got hired by Yale, okay. and she left all of the students. And <laughs> yeah. I said, "Well, it's time to do something different." Right. And I started doing abstract work. And initially, it was wood. And so kind of like this piece. Right this here. is this is one of my pieces. Mm -hmm. So I was fascinated by nature. I spend a lot of time outdoors, hiking, camping, rafting, riding horses. So yeah. I'm an outdoor person. So I had a home in Vermont with lots of trees, sugar maples. Mm -hmm. And these are trees that have died on their own. I didn't cut any living trees down. It's actually much harder to work to get the bark off of a tree that's alive. So I would cut the trees down when they died mm -hmm. and before they fall on the ground. Once they fall on the ground, uh, water, insects, they right, disintegrate. Right. So, uh, but, and then I connected the trees to the stones and everything yeah. else, okay? So the stone has been uh, kind of part of your kind of Visual vocabulary for a long time. Long time, it, long time. So, no, I don't. I don't change you, the stone. I drill holes in the stone. Okay. I don't carve the stone. That's it. This is it. That's I, so that's the actual stone. That's as the stone. You find. And to be honest, most of the stones I got in a landscape place. I didn't pick this up somewhere outside. You right. know, I mean, it's not. So connecting things together, I drill holes in the in the stones, mm -hmm. small stones, big stones, and there's always a pin in there. Ah, okay, that gets epoxy a hole in here. Mm -hmm. So I try and hide when I put the stone on, so you don't see the connection. Hmm. And there's also pins coming out of here. Now, this could come off. I don't want to pull it off right, right now. Right. But there's two pins in here. And basically what I do is carve the wood mm -hmm. so you don't see anything. You don't see the pins. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is called Together at Last because these two trees were on different parts of my property and now they're <laughs> okay. together at last. I try and have fun with the names. Yeah. You know. and, and then you evolve them from uh, working with the stone and wood into now also working with metal. Yes. Well, what happened Two things. Number one, when I did work with the wood, it always looked like a branch or a tree. There were no curves or all unusual shapes. Right. So I was kind of limited. The other thing I was limited is there was only so many trees uh, and I wasn't cutting living trees down. Mm -hmm. So I love the nature, I love this. So I transitioned away from the wood to steel and, and stones. These are kinetic pieces. Uh, I'm fascinated with kinetic sculpture. Mm -hmm. I'm doing kinetic sculpture with water now. But oh, this, with water. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you pull this back, this is what happens, okay? Now, everything in motion wants to stop. This wants to stop, okay? Mm -hmm. And it will stop because of friction and gravity over a period of time. Right. 
But ultimately it always stops, and I'm going to help it stop, it always stops and rests in the middle. Okay? Come to rest. Now when I pull it to one side, I'm giving energy to it. Mm -hmm. I feel this pulling against my hand. It wants, it wants to go away from my hand. So when I let go, this is what happens. If I give it more energy, it'll go off the end of the yeah, yeah, piece of do you work? Do you do like small scale <laughs> tests or you work directly on the size, uh, say for example, <coughs> to create the right I, I, uh, bending of the tube? I, I don't make sketches. I don't make drawings. I just you build, just go just for build it. it. Okay. Go. So this kind of happened all by accident. Okay. I was okay. at my pipe bender and he had a piece. And I was going to, he said, you can take it. I set it down and it moved a little bit. I said, oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I worked with it to figure out how to get most motion out of it. But I didn't just say, I want to make a kinetic piece that moves. It was right. a happy accident, to be right. honest. Okay. Right. That's great. And I like and, happy and accidents. Some other, and this is a little I'll, different I'll try one. this one myself. Go ahead. See. Go ahead. You can do it. So, oh, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can feel the weight as you push it. So if you push it down a little more, you get a little more motion. On oh, it. I see. I was afraid that's to all. hit the... Oh. No, no, no. It, it's not going to hit. I make it so it didn't hit. That's all. And this is a different one. This right. has little stones on the end. Yeah. Love this piece. And there's kind of a nice sound. It's a... Yes, exactly. You yeah. know, it makes a pleasant sound. Soothing. It's a mm -hmm. soothing sound. So this was a very significant piece for me, this one here, because this was wood and steel and stone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this was the last piece I did with any wood at all. After this one, I just did steel and stone. Steel so this was, it's called transition. You know, transition piece says holding on, but I like the transition right. better. So this is kind of what you consider like your, your gallery. gallery here. The gallery right? here, you yes. You can bring collectors right. in. Right, right. Now, uh, oh, here's, here's another wooden piece that's quite interesting. This is a piece of petrified wood, okay? Which mm -hmm. is pretty amazing. The whole story, if you read about how wood petrifies, the wood oh, doesn't yeah. really turn to stone. The, the, the st material in earth th mm -hmm. that makes the stone takes the place of the cells of the wood. It's, it's, it's pretty fascinating. I studied a little bit about petrified wood. The wood doesn't get petrified. It gets <laughs> transformed is what it I is. I see. Yeah. Wow. So I like this. I bought that in, uh, out in Utah. Yeah. And this is an installation that's ready to go, right? Yes. This is a piece for uh, Lurie's Children's Hospital is building a clinic uh, up in Skokie okay. on Tui and McCormick. And this is going on the outside walls. And this is just raw aluminum, mm -hmm. but they'll be painted bright colors. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and these wood pieces here are going to help me figure out the mounting. In other mm -hmm. words, there's a bracket on the back of each one that I build. The bracket gets put on the brick. Mm -hmm. We take the, the kids off. They get painted, pop back on the bracket. And this is kind of approximate height? That was the exact height. That's the exact height, okay. That's the exact height of, of where they're going to be against the building. Very exactly. great. Yeah. That's awesome. This is a small uh, sculpture, mm -hmm. uh, kinetic, and there are stones way up on top, and, and when the wind blows, they move in the wind. So okay. this is a half-inch piece of steel rod, and steel at a certain point is flexible. It, it bends, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, uh, so these, I'm these actually... i to push it. No, 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 <laughs> it's no problem, okay? Uh -huh. So basically, outside, this piece Will, will bend in the wind. I'm building a piece uh, for a friend of mine named mm -hmm. Nando Parado. And Nando was one of the 16 survivors of the plane crash in the Andes. Which there was a whole book and a movie read, you know, online. made about it. Right. Yeah, which so I remember I saw the movie when I was a teenager. <laughs> so the, the plane crashed October 13, 1972 in the wow. Andes. Mm -hmm. And there were 45 people on the plane. And there were 16 who ended up surviving, and my friend Nando was one of them. That's amazing. And the idea, this giant stone I have, <clears throat> there's going to be 16 stones to fix mm -hmm. to, this, to the big stone, and then there's going to be 29 stones up in the air that represent the people who had died. Amazing. And Nando lost his mother and his sister, younger sister, in the crash as well. Wow. So it's, well, the, first, very powerful. Actually, it's the first international project mm -hmm. that I've mm -hmm. been doing. I have mm -hmm. stuff in California, in Champaign, in Vermont. Mm -hmm. But it's, for me, it's very exciting. And what, what's interesting is that as I'm working on it, mm -hmm. okay, I'm working on the stones, I'm thinking about the people who died and what that, happened. It's yeah. sort of an emotional kind of sculpture. Right. Even though I didn't know any of the people or anything else, but right. through Nando. Uh, so this is the actual stone. This is the actual stone that's, that's going to be shipped to Uruguay. To Uruguay, all the way to Uruguay. Uruguay. Yes. A little bit heavy. <laughs> and, and I actually bought the stone in upstate New York uh, wow. about a month ago. And the stone Incredible. Uh, is, a, is four tons, 8,000 pounds, so it's a pretty heavy stone. 
So on the top of the stone are going to be 16 small stones. Mm -hmm. And basically what happens is I drill a hole in the stone, I drill a hole in the rock, and it's all cemented together. So that stone will never move off the rock. So on this surface will be the 16 survivors okay. from the crash. And one of them is Nando, which and one, that, whatever, yeah. whatever you want. Okay. So these represent all the young boys who survived. And then what you saw there the in the air, there's going to be 29 stones in the air that will be moving in the wind. And those are the right. 29 people that died. Excellent. Wow, incredible. Well, what an amazing uh, story. And, uh, you know, thank you, Jeffrey, for having us thank here. You. Thank you. Thank our fun. friends for watching. Uh, it's just a, an incredible, uh, you know, experience to be here. Where thank can you. our friends find you on uh, online? Where's your website? Uh, well, there's a website. There is jeffreybreslow.com, but you're better off going to the gallery. Okay. Uh, it's westloop.gallery. Exactly. And my work's there, and a bunch of other artists are on there as well. Excellent. And we're going to put the links in there also in the sure. comments thank and you. here under the video. So thank you, my friends, for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. Please share this episode with all your friends. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank Have you. a great day. <laughs> <laughs> there we go.